Okay, Compass Learning Grades and in grade. Uh, we're going to talk today about how Bridgeway uses uh, in grade to compute its grades and just a little bit about the philosophy behind the grades and how we figure them in Compass Learning. Okay, so what I'm showing you on this screen is that if at the end of quarter one uh, we just looked at whatever the student had done at the end of quarter one and put their grade in here, but say this student had only finished 4% of the course and he got a good grade, maybe the beginning of the course is very easy. Then we figured the grade at the, at the end of quarter two just for the work done in quarter two, quarter three just for the work completed in quarter three, and then quarter four would just be only the work completed in quarter four. If we average these four together, well the student's going to get an 86. But because our students um, don't have a required amount that they have to finish at the end of each quarter, they could only have a small amount done and then that would count for a quarter of their grade. Well, that's not um, going to work. So what we do is we figure it uh, as a cumulative grade where he finished. This is the grade for everything he had finished at the end of quarter one and the same for each subsequent quarter and then you can see that his final grade is actually a 79 not a 96. Now what does that mean when we're figuring their grades? That means we have to use um, some different methods um, depending on the subject which I'm going to show you that now. Okay this is the Compass Learning uh, login screen where you log in with your teacher login. Um, if you're going to uh, check your students grades you're going to be using uh, the report feature and you're going to be using both the progress report, the student progress report, and the student completion report. Um, let's look at the student completion report first. So we're just going to drop down and click on that. We're going to click on next. We are, you can run this report for all subjects or you can just choose one or five, as many as you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it for Algebra 1. Okay, I'm going to run it for all my high school students, which is going to be here. Then after I make my selections, I'm going to click Next. And this is going to bring me to a screen where I I'm going to click this little box to choose all work through the end date. Then I'm going to choose use the highest score from repeated test quizzes and assignments or uh, what do we call those? Uh, lesson activities. Um, and then it's important that I choose my school because these assignments that are showing up here are assignments that I have created uh, individually for students under my uh, teacher login. These are not the main Algebra 1 coursework. So I'm going to check my school and then I'm going to update the selection. Then I'll see all of the Algebra 1 assignments uh, show up and I want to make sure I include everything because this may be a quiz retake. We want that to be figured into the student's score. So I'm going to click this box here to select all assignments and then I'm going to click Next. I'm going to pick my whole class by checking the box next to my class, I could also click on the plus sign and run this report for an individual student. Um, at this point, we're not using anything in this box, so I'm just going to click Next. And then I can either save this report, if this is a report that I'm running weekly, I can give this report a title, and then when I come in, I don't need to make those selections again. I just choose the Save Report and then I am going to generate the report. You can choose uh, to run it offline if you're doing all subjects, all students. It may take you know 15 or 20 minutes. You can do it offline um, or uh, you can do it online if you're just doing one subject or one student. So I'm going to wait for the report to generate. Okay, so now here we see the, the report that's generated and um, you can see here what you selected. Um, the assignments that you selected, that we selected all work, so you can check yourself and make sure this is what you wanted. Use only high school score was yes. Um, and then here are the students who are taking Algebra 1. And Algebra 1, as you can see, is made up of learning activities and activity quizzes. Um, if there were chapter tests in Algebra 1, they would be listed here, but there are not. Um, and there aren't very many graded, if any, learning activities, although they are um, tracking the completion of the learning activities. 
So this student score for Algebra 1 at this point in time is a 96. Um, so in a few minutes we'll go and look at the grade book and see how to put that score in. But notice a few other things about this report. An important thing that we run this report for often is to look for the percent complete. So if we want to see, tell the student how much they've done of the course, um, they can look right here at this percent complete. Also over here you can see the time they've spent in this course. And this student has spent quite a bit of time in Algebra 1. Um, also maybe take a look at the number of activities. Notice this student, I'm very familiar with her, she, has completed the whole course in 23 hours. I'm not really sure that that's possible, but she did it. So why do you think this student spent so much time in Algebra 1? It's watching activities over and over again, um, taking quizzes over and over again, um, struggling through it, and the, these, this student is obviously not. And this one's halfway through, spent about 45 hours. Typically it takes about 90 to 120 hours to complete a course. Um, that's what we're hoping for anyway. Um, so this is the student completion report. This is where we're going to go and get the average uh, quiz score, chapter test score, and learning activity score, as well as the percent, percent complete. Um, if a student calls asking just for a snapshot of their progress, you could run this report just for that student and see all the courses that they're taking and let them know um, their progress. There are other ways to do that as well, which we'll look at in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to look at the student progress report now. Uh, one, you can um, print this out, which you probably will need to do for the purpose of inputting it into the gradebook. Um, you can view it as a PDF. If you export it um, into Excel, it gets a little messy with this percentage goes away, and so I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just viewing it as a PDF and then printing it, and um, a good idea to print it um, multiple pages per sheet to save on your ink. Um, so I won't do that right now. It looks exactly the same. It's a PDF that's printable, but it's a, you have to do that in order to print. All right, so we're going to close this, and we're going to go and we're going to look at our other progress report, the student progress report. Now, this is a report that we're going to need to run um, to get the Odyssey writer grades um, to put them into the gradebook. Now, the difference here is that we do not need to run a cumulative report for the whole course for Odyssey writer grades we just need to run it since the last time we ran the report. So I'm going to run this for um, English 2. Just going to get my high school students here. I'm going to run it since last week. Since I put the grades in last week for all the Odyssey Writer projects, so now I just need to get any that they did this week. Um, so I'm going to uncheck everything except for Odyssey Writer Projects, because that's all I want. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to choose my class. Again, you could do the drop-down. You could save the report, or you can generate it online immediately, which I'm going to do. Okay, so here's the Odyssey Writer Report. It's a little messy to look at, look at in this format, so often what, what I will do is um, in this case, I'm going to export it to Excel so that I can sort it rather than by uh, student name. I can sort it by Odyssey Writer Project. That way when I get to my grade book, it's easier to input the grades. So it's not going to be a very long report. I'm just going to click on Export as CSV. That's going to open it up with Excel. And it'll just take a second to do that. Okay, here's my report in Excel. Um, first thing I like to do is, is just kind of squish things over. I don't need to see all of this. What I do need to see is the Odyssey, uh, the, the activity title, which is the Odyssey Writer title, and I need to see the score. That's pretty important, but I don't need to see those other things. And so then you can see that this is sorted by um, student name, but over here, um, is the score. And the, the second thing I like to do is I like to sort it by the score 
and I'm going to get rid of all those scores that have an NA on them. That way my report won't be too long to print out. So I'm going to sort that quickly by um, activity score and then I'm just going to highlight. I know this is kind of going off the recording but I'm going to highlight and then I am going to just do a little um, delete of rows. So now look what I'm left with. Not too much. And then I can sort this by activity title which is more beneficial to me if I have a lot of, of uh, things to put in that I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to choose activity title and then I'm going to add student. So if one student did uh, the same activity multiple times that'll show up and I, I'm only going to put in their highest grade. So then I'm going to sort it by that. Don't actually have any repeats here. And then I can just print this out and then I can go to my grade book and I can put in these scores. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so I've gone to ingrade.com, which is where the online gradebook is located. Um, I'm going to scroll over here to the right and click on Login. I'm going to log in as the Bridgeway admin, which Bridgeway09 as the password. You may be logging in with your teacher login to just put grades in your classes. When I log in with the admin, I can see all the classes. Um, so here is my school. Under here I can see classes and students. Uh, we'll talk more about InGrade in a further lesson, but right now we're just going to go right to classes. We're going to scroll down so we can go right to English 2. And this is where you can see here's the Odyssey Writer Projects. Um, in your handout you're going to see a table so that you'll know if a student makes an A he's going to get a 96. If he makes an A minus he's going to get a 90. Um, since the Odyssey Writer Projects are listed as letter grades we have to convert them here when we put them in the table. Um, so basically we just take a look at our Excel sheet. Most likely we've printed it out. I'll refer to it again. So we can see here that Kira Dwin McDowell has an A on Odyssey Writer 16. So let's just go back to our in grade um, class and put that grade in. Kira Dwin McDowell an A on Odyssey Writer 16. All right. So the easiest way to do it is just do it here on this front screen. You can also go into your assignment list and scroll down and find that Odyssey Writer 16. Here it is. And then if you scroll down here, you'll actually see a list of all the students. Here's Kira Dwin McDowell, and her A is a 96. When you do it this way, you need to go all the way to the bottom and save the assignment. So if you had a lot of Odyssey Writer 16s, you could put them all in that way. You could also scroll down here, find the student's line, and then you're just going to be tabbing over. This gets a little messy, though, because you can't see the top. Um, so you got to come over to 16. And notice they're not in order. Maybe next year we can get them in order. Um, there's no way to order them other than date input. Um, so if they didn't all get put in on the same day. So this is the column we're looking for here. And here is her grade already in there because we went in through the assignment view. Okay and then the other thing that you're going to put in here is that um, average for the quizzes and the test from the report, the student completion report. And you can see that those are going to go here at the beginning. No, they're not. We'll look in our assignment list. We'll go all the way down. Here's the quiz average. Here's the chapter test average. No, so as soon as you put the grade in, the, the student's grade is reconfigured and their grade shows in the left-hand column of the gradebook. We'll talk about the gradebook more in another lesson, but I'm almost out of time. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you today, how to put grades, compute grades, um, encompass learning, and put them into the in-grade gradebook. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.